Let's look at a couple of examples to see how we test using our new modified effective decision procedure. So here we have an argument. No people are islands, hence it's false that all people are islands. So I'm going to start off in Boolean logic. I'll draw a premise diagram. I'll label my premise diagram. Subject class on the left, predicate class on the right. Label premise diagram. I did the same thing for my conclusion diagram. Now I'm going to look at that premise diagram and I say, OK, I am a good Boolean. So I don't know if there are any people. I don't know if there are any islands. But what I do know is nothing is both a person and an island. And so that area three, the intersection, the place where there'd be things that are both people and islands, that has to be empty. So I'm going to shade it in, like so. Now, that's all I need to make my universal negative true in Boolean logic. So I go to my conclusion diagram. Now, my conclusion diagram asserts that my universal affirmative is false. So it says it's false that all people are islands. So I might want to go back and just draw out the diagram to show what has to be true for all people to be islands, that categorical statement to be true. So that's what it takes. I don't know if the P's, I don't know if there are any I's, but what I do know is everything that is a P, if there is anything, is going to be in the I circle. And so that area one has to be empty. So I'd shade that in, make sure that it's empty, and that's all I need to make all people are islands true. But my conclusion says it's false. So to make my whole conclusion true, I have to prevent that from happening. So if shading area one makes all people are islands true, if I put something in, an X, then I've got a true conclusion. That is, it's impossible for all people are islands to be true. And my conclusion, it's false that all people are islands is now a true conclusion. Now I'm going to test for Boolean, Boolean validity. So I look at my conclusion diagram and I say, OK, in order for my conclusion diagram to be guaranteed to be true, I have to be guaranteed that there is at least one thing. It is a person. It is not an island. I look over at my premise diagram and I say, OK, here's what has to be true if my premise is true. There can't be anything that's a person and an island. That intersection area three has to be empty. But that's all that has to be true for my premise to be true. And so I'm not guaranteed that there is, in fact, something in that area one, that area that is a person and only a person. And so this argument is invalid in Boolean. It's possible for the premise to be true without guaranteeing that the conclusion is true. So now I'm going to test it for Aristotelian validity. And I'm being a good logician, so I'm going to be clever. I'm going to be lazy. I don't have to worry about the conclusion diagram. I am done with that. So done. I only have to worry about the premise diagram. And I only have to worry about the class that's going to matter, that subject class. So I go to my premise diagram. I look at that P-circle. And I say, does it have a member? There are no X's in there. And so I say, OK, I've got to put an X in there. And I look and I say, OK, area three has to be empty. The only place I can put that X is area one. So I put that X in and I circle it to remind myself I'm only entitled to that X if P is, in fact, a good Aristotelian category. And now I've done everything I need to do to my premise diagram. I can test again for Aristotelian validity. Now I look at my conclusion diagram. I need an X that's a P and only a P. I need that to be guaranteed in order to guarantee my conclusion is true. Now I look at my premise diagram. Here's what has to be true if my premise is true under the Aristotelian assumption. Area 3 still has to be empty. Area 1 now has to have at least one member. So if my premise is true, then I have everything I need to make my conclusion true. Namely, there's at least one thing. It's a person and only a person. So I now have to make that last check before I write valid university and logic. I look at my premise class and I ask myself, and my 
sorry, subject class, and I asked myself, are there people? Is that a good Aristotelian category? And sure, there are lots of people. So it's a perfectly good Aristotelian category. So I write valid and Aristotelian logic. Let's try another example. All round squares are black squares. Some round squares are black squares. So again, I'll draw out my circles. I'll label subject on the left, predicate on the right, label it a premise diagram. I'll do the same thing for my conclusion diagram. Now, I look at my premise diagram. And I start in Boolean logic. Don't know if there are any R's. Don't know if there are any B's. What I do know is everything that is an R, if there is anything, is also a B. And so that area one there, that would have to be empty. So I shade that in. Can't be anything there. That's all I need in Boolean logic for that universal affirmative to be true. Go to my conclusion diagram. There's at least one thing. It's an R. It's also a B. So I'm going to put an X in. And that X has to go in the area that is both R and B. So I put my X in right there in area three. Now I can test for Boolean validity. So I look at this argument and I say, okay, I need an X in both R and B in that intersection, area three, guaranteed, in order to guarantee my conclusion is true. I look at my premise diagram. Here's what has to be true to make my premise true. Area one has to be empty. Nothing else has to be true to make my premise true. That's the way the world has to be. So I'm not guaranteed to have an X in that intersection, in that area three, something that is both an R and a B. And so this argument is invalid in Boolean. It's possible for the premise to be true without guaranteeing the conclusion is true. So now I want to test in Aristotelian logic. Again, I'm being clever. I'm being lazy. I don't worry about the conclusion diagram. I'm done with that. So done with that. Go over to the premise diagram. Go over to the subject class, the only class that matters. And I ask myself, does that subject class have a member? Well, right now it doesn't. It can't go in area one, so it has to go in area three. So to satisfy the Aristotelian assumption, I put an X in area three. I circle it to remind myself I'm only entitled to that X if R is a good Aristotelian class. Now I'll test for Aristotelian validity again. And I'll look at my conclusion. I need something that is both an R and a B. There has to be at least one thing guaranteed to guarantee my conclusion is true. Now I look at my premise diagram. If my premise is true under the Aristotelian assumption, then there is something guaranteed that is both an R and a B. So it looks like the argument is valid. However, I have to check my premise category. I look up at my premise uh, my subject class and my premise there, and I say, oh, round squares. Well, there aren't any round squares, so it's not a good Aristotelian category. It's empty, and it can't have a member, so it violates the Aristotelian assumption. So, whereas I would have wrote valid Aristotelian, once I realize that it doesn't have a member, I write existential fallacy.